Hi, my name is Dean Warrington. I am a Knowledge of London instructor. And in this video, I am going to show you how the stage two written exam works and give you some important tips and ideas on how to pass it. The written exam is mistakenly called the map test by many people because once upon a time, there was a map section within the exam. That's since been removed. There is no map in this exam. The exam is intended to be a gateway to appearances and anyone who passes the exam is considered to be good enough to be on the appearance stage of the knowledge. There is a compulsory mock exam that you must take after completing 80 runs. The mistake many people make here is that they actually think and are led to believe they should know all the runs and points in the first 80 runs. Scaremongering tactics are used here by some people to make you waste your time picking up unnecessary information that will contribute nothing to your overall standard, but just delay your progress forward. You do not need to prepare for an exam that you cannot pass or fail. It is purely an experience to introduce you to the format of the real exam that you will sit after 320 runs. So I suggest once you have completed your 80 runs, you put your paper in to take the mock exam straight away and get this aspect of the knowledge out of the way. The biggest question for the written test is when exactly are you ready to take it? So some time ago, students were taking far too long to complete their 320 runs and their two year time limit was expiring. The advice from TfL was to put your paper in to be tested even though you considered yourself not ready and you may have only completed one or two blue books. It was presumed that you would fail, but you would now be on the system and not need to ask for an extension. What actually happened was many students passed even though they had only completed 160 runs with no points. So the question of how much work do you need to do to pass the test ranges from not very much to as much as you like. What I will tell you here is going to be the best practice so that you have a decent chance of scoring on appearances once you pass the test. Anywhere from 600 to 1500 points under your belt is going to give you a very realistic chance of passing this test. Your real objective, however, is to have 1500 plus points under your belt before the first appearance and then build upon this repertoire in the 56 day intervals between appearances. Passing the test does not require any real special study, but there are some very important tips to employ so you decrease your chances of failing. I will cover those tips in a practical format in this video. Now, as I already mentioned, it is possible to pass this exam even if you've only completed 160 runs with no points. I'd also say that if you are nearing your two year limitation, then no matter what stage you have reached, you should still apply for your written test. If you pass, you will be on appearances. If you fail, you will be in the system and they will wait for you to reapply for another exam. I often hear students complain that they feel they put their paper in too early. They passed the test, but didn't feel ready for appearances. The first thing to repeat here is that if the test is doing its job correctly, then by passing it, you were ready for appearances. Being on appearances is far better than not being on appearances, regardless of whether you are passing or failing them. Your level or standard doesn't improve or get worse because you are on appearances. It gets better or worse because of the work you put in in between appearances. After every appearance, you have 56 days to improve. You also now have the experience gleaned from the appearances you have taken. This is going to help you when it comes to the psychology of controlling your nerves and mental preparation needed. So let's presume that you fail four appearances and are redlined. Do you think you put in too early? What level and how much experience would you have gained in comparison if you had not taken those appearances? You would have gained nothing. 
and you would be at the identical standard you are currently. But without the experience of those four appearances, it is impossible to be on appearances too early. You cannot fail, you can only learn. Failure is success in progress. Every time you fail, you should be learning from the experience. The fact is, your standard will be no different whether you're being tested or not. So if you are failing your appearances, then at least you have something to fail or succeed at. Someone who is not on appearances does not get that opportunity. They do not gain any experience and they will remain on zero until they become brave enough to start appearances. The reason the written test was introduced was to combat students that would apply for the knowledge and do no study whatsoever and apply for testing. They clogged up the system. This test is in place to make students at least learn their blue book runs and acquire some points before testing. You are not expected to know everything and at no stage will you know everything. If you pass the test, you knew enough. Taking appearances will not affect your standard of knowledge. Your standard of knowledge is only affected by your study regime and volume of practice. When you do pass the test, don't make the mistake of focusing on finding as many points as possible. The thing that statistically will give you the best reward for the first appearance is to practice point to point as much as you can physically stand. Worry about building your points repertoire after the first appearance. And in that 56 day period, you should aim for a minimum of 125 points per week. If you are full time on the knowledge, it should be nearer to 250 per week. 1000 to 2000 points between appearances on 56 day level. So stop making excuses. Stop being afraid. You will never feel ready. But at some stage, you must take the courageous step and walk forward. Now let's look at the structure of the test. You will be given five questions relating to Blue Book Runs Forward. Each question will contain three versions of a Blue Book route. You need to pick the correct route. You have a three to one chance just from guessing. And each correct answer will count as 10 points towards the 60 that you need to pass. The other part of the test consists of 25 points. You need to pick the correct location out of six possible answers and you have a six to one chance just by guessing. Each correct answer will score two points towards the 60 points needed to pass. So you see from this, the importance of getting the runs correct is five times greater than getting a point correct. If you get all of the runs correct, you only need to answer five points from the 25 questions listed. And statistically, you have a 40% chance of getting five correct answers if you guessed all 25. The points used in the test are very random. They range from very popular to never being heard of before or since. There will nearly always be five points in this section that everybody should know. The best preparation for this test is to download the Wizan Wiz Points app and use the TFL exam part one button. When you finish the app exam, it will tell you how many correct answers are required from the run section for you to pass. When you tap continue, it will show you all your wrong answers and highlight the correct answer with a green glow. There is a stopwatch at the top right and you should easily complete all 25 questions in under 15 minutes. Use educated guessing. Practice a lot and your educated guessing will improve. Competent is the best level to practice on, but experiment with the different levels of difficulty. Now let's look at some practical examples of runs. In general, the runs take on a format or pattern that repeats throughout. 
Each question has three options to choose from and those three options will contain one illegal answer, one long or wide answer and obviously the correct answer. The best approach here is not to look for the correct answer. Look for the long route or illegal route first. If you succeed in finding just one of them, then at least you've narrowed your chances down to a 50-50 choice. Let's try some examples and cover some issues one by one. But let me first make a disclaimer. These examples were made in March 2021 and depending on when you watch this video, they may have changed and become out of date. But the guidance remains the same. I will put a run on the screen now. You can pause the video and see if you can choose the correct answer. So here I have deliberately chosen the first five runs which you all will be most familiar with. The first thing to point out is do not choose a run because it looks most like the run you have learnt. If it's exactly the same as your run, then that's great. But if it has even a small difference, then you must question it. The next thing here is that the correct answer may be nothing like you expect. So in this instance, you really must look for the wrong answers to establish the right answer. Version A uses a street that unless you are a local person, I guarantee most of you have not heard of. And this should be a red flag. Version B is very unusual and what may scare you straight away is the right turn into Seven Sisters Road. Can you do that? Is the run wide? So you need to question that. And if you know it's illegal, then you won't use it. And if you're not sure if it's legal, then you have to hold it and maybe use it. You've got to balance that now. Run number three most certainly feels wide to me. And this is going to be the first run I think I can eliminate. I'm now left with a 50-50 choice. So you've got to think, do you see anything in run B that you are certain is illegal? Do you see anything in run A that you are not familiar with? And now you need to make your choice. So before I tell you the answer, make your choice now. The correct answer is run B, and this route is as short as any other you can make. It is a really good and interesting alternative to the more common used routes. I use this route to highlight the fact that you need to look for the wrong answers first. Only eliminate a run if you are certain something is wrong with it. If you're unsure, hold on to it so you can at least make a 50-50 educated guess. Let's try run number two. This one I think is a little bit easier. Version B, for example, is using Judd Street, which no longer works. But here lies a small dilemma and a little danger to be aware of. TfL do not update the test runs very quickly. For example, they may still contain runs that are considered to be the correct answer, but currently do not work due to COVID changes. There is leeway for the runs that are changing and TfL will allow the use of older and currently out of date routes. The problem you now have is still the same. Look for the wrong answers. Version C most certainly looks wide to me. So I now have a 50-50 choice, but in this instance, I think I'm lucky and the run matches my own. So that one's easy. Another thing to look out for that may catch you out is when things are not written or called in the same way you are used to. There is no right or wrong way of calling things like bare left instead of left or even forward. These are all open for interpretation and vary from person to person. I will add, the more advanced you become, the less you will be using bare left and bare right and the more instances you'll change it to a forward or a right because it's easier to say. The other issue is junctions. For example, culling circus. Some years back, an examiner was failing people because they were adamant it was not called culling circus. This may be true, but calling or not calling it is fine and not an issue. The examiner was being a little pedantic. The same is going to apply to St. Agnes Well, Hybrid Corner, Archway Junction, Queen's Gardens and others. So if you see any variation in the way these are written or called, it's all completely fine. Now run number three, version A looks okay. I can't see much wrong with it. I don't see anything illegal, so it may be the right answer. Version B, now I see forward New Bridge Street, left Queen Victoria Street and right Queen Street Place. Mm. The thing is, you may or may not know that these are illegal. So think to yourself, have you 
ever physically done any of those turnings. You should have no memory of ever turning there. So this should raise a red flag for you. Version C looks like a more direct route to Bricklayer's Arms than version A. So I think version A is wide slightly. So version C is the correct answer. Let's move on to run number four. Here, I will just let you pause the video and work through it yourself. Remember, you are looking for something illegal and something unnecessarily long or wide. Okay, hopefully you chose route A. Route B is most certainly wide and route C is illegal at Union Street. Now one more question, and once again, it's pause the video time and see what you choose. Route A uses left Oxford Street, which is illegal. Route B is most certainly wide, and Route C is the correct answer. So to summarize, on the run section, look for the wrong answers first. On the point section, don't forget to make educated guesses. If you do not know the answer, play the statistics. Every run you think you get wrong means you must get five points more correct. Do not look for the run to be the same as your run. The test in general is not too difficult. And if you pass, you are by definition ready for appearances. I hope this goes some way to easing your mind about the written test. And remember, you will never feel ready. You will never know everything. And it is impossible to be on appearances too early if you have passed the test. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Put your comments below. I promise I will answer all of them. And until the next video, goodbye. Right. Last go. Out. Straight at the camera. Go. There, there. Ready? Go. Camera's on. Hello. Hello. Thank, thank you for watching. watching. Subscribe mm. and hit that the bell. Oh, no, and hit put that like button. Mm. And mm. put your comments Com down below, below in the comment section. Bye. 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 Nice to meet you. <laughs>